Hello and welcome back to Compiler Programming. In the last video, we uh, struggled a bit with the import section of the executable and added uh, other two sections that are um, much simpler because uh, for the code, uh, this is already what we know how to do. And eventually this will be replaced by our own machine code. And uh, as for the uh, P data, uh, this section we will eventually need to know how to do, but this is not strictly required right now for the function in executable. Now, um, we weren't able to make the executable actually work in the last video, um, and between the videos I wanted to make sure that I didn't accidentally mess up with uh, one of the bytes or something like this, so I just uh, checked all the bytes, went through all the code, and uh, verified that um, it was actually fine. I did find one issue, so here uh, we had a missing um, uh, 10 byte. And another thing that I noticed um, was that we weren't actually fully outputting the this section, because we were only outputting the bytes, but we were not uh, adding the padding because all the sections need to be aligned to this uh, 512 bytes and we weren't doing it here. So uh, these are the changes, just so that you can see them uh, here. Just a couple of lines, but with uh, just these couple of lines, if you run the tests and we do uh, build slash test, exe, which is our executable, it no longer, um, you know, barks at us. And if we check what it actually output we, with echo error level, because remember the only thing that our executable does is it calls exit process with uh, number 42. And this is exactly what we have. So tada, we have our own executable that we uh, output ourselves. And now uh, let me uh, commit that. And we are ready, I think we to uh, be ready to proceed with, with the more exciting part, which is cleaning this up. And in particular, I believe we can throw away much more stuff from this executable um, than we already have. So let's do just that. The first thing uh, would be that I believe we don't actually need to have uh, these uh, DOS program bytes. I mean, at some point it would be nice if we did that, but honestly, I'm not targeting DOS at all. And I, I don't care if it uh, crashes when you try to run it in DOS. So let's uh, try to do that. Let's try to get rid of these uh, DOS program. But one of the things that will need to happen when we remove this is we will need to append NT signature at the right place because uh, as you can see here, um, LFA new is uh, like, it needs to be at this position and this was done because we put these bytes in there. So we automatically adjust our offset uh, but now we will need to do it manually. Okay, so we say uh, exe buffer occupied, and this needs to be those header e lfa new. Okay, let's check that. Seems to be at least building and we can try to run this. Okay, we will need to do this quite a bit. So let me just try to create a command for us to make it nicer to test this stuff. And echo error level, something like this. Uh, okay, so the tests did finish, but then we didn't 
build the executable. Okay. Maybe at least let's do that. Ah, okay, because error level is not, yeah, yeah. Okay, gotcha. So the problem is uh, error level is actually not zero, so we don't get to echo at all. Okay, now we do, and we have 42. Great. So, and maybe we can say exit code. Yes, nice. this. Cool. So we have a very easy way to restart our program, but as you can see, uh, we don't actually need any of this stuff over here. So we can get rid of these things and be much happier. Now the next thing is, well, since we don't have any program in those anyway, we can just probably get rid of all of this stuff as well. Let's check that. Because uh, the rest of the fields in here were describing um, data that is necessary for this to be run as a DOS executable. And since I said we are just ignoring this fact, we the only thing we need to do is to tell the system that this is a valid executable, which is sort of done by this stuff. And then uh, where to search for uh, for the int signature. Okay, uh, so this works. Now I, if I, I want to also change this number because right now we are wasting bytes. Uh, the actual DOS header is quite small, but we are putting signature at quite a large offset from the from the header, and it would be nice to bring it up. But I'm not certain if we actually we'll need to adjust any of the other offsets here if we do that. Uh, so let's try, and if it breaks, we'll just add a to-do and uh, do it later. But the idea here is we say that uh, the location of the signature uh, will be right after the DOS header, and the way we do that is with uh, doing something like this. Okay, let's check uh, what happens. And now we don't actually need this line because we can just output it directly. I mean, in, in a sense, it doesn't hurt, but it also is not required. Great. So that I think that's a very nice progress. And we can commit it separately and say get uh, read of uh, those stub program. Great. Now let's continue with our cleanup. The next thing that I want to do is, uh, well, we'll just go through this file sort of and see what we can, uh, what we can do. And the thing is, we don't really need this timestamp. We could generate it ourselves, but I believe it's also perfectly fine if we do uh, this as zero. So let's verify that. Uh, and that does not seem to work. Interesting. Okay, so we do need to have a valid timestamp. Okay, that's good to know. So let's leave it as generate ourselves. Uh, now, the next thing I'm looking at is number of sections. So, as I mentioned, we we don't really need exception information um, for this executable to work. So to simplify things, I would like to remove it. And that means removing one of the sections. So we say now the number of sections is going to be two. And here we just going to get rid of this uh, P data section. That means that here we can also get rid of it. Uh, but uh, we also need to restore. So do, do the same alignment as we did here, but now for the previous section, which was previously taken care of by uh, this stuff. So we say that uh, our data, 
our data and this should be able to and go away okay let's uh, look at it again we have text section our data section and we also then need to remove this uh, accepting information so now this goes to here and we are fixing this uh, fix me okay let's check this out it still works just fine again let's uh, at least save this stuff or maybe we can even commit and say uh, remove uh, p p data uh, section from generated exe good so things are getting simpler now uh, the next thing is uh, with other stuff so we definitely need import stuff and we definitely need import address table uh, but we probably can live without debug information so let's i mean in a sense uh, that information is bogus anyway um, and uh, yeah so this is this stuff and i think we can just live without it okay here and notice this add empty entry because i believe we need to padding here we can recheck that but i think we need uh, like a zero entry there at the end anyhow for now let's get rid of debug stuff Let's run our test again. Okay, so this does not really work. Let's figure out what's going on and why this doesn't work. So, let's start by removing this stuff, I guess just not write them out okay so this also breaks our test or it doesn't maybe i was doing something wrong yeah so this is fine okay so this is fine we can get rid of the debug bytes but i would expect us to be able to get rid of this stuff as well because it shouldn't really do anything especially since we don't really have any any real information there anyway okay yeah, I think I just uh, ran the wrong thing or something. Okay, good. So we got rid of the debug information. That is nice. Now, we had this and we commit and say get rid of debug uh, info in the generated exe okay good so now we are getting somewhere this is actually uh, getting to the point where it is kind of uh, kind of nice so timestamp we'll figure out how to generate this this should not be really a problem uh, these things, um, I mean, it doesn't really matter what we put in here. Uh, I believe we can do zeros here if we really wanted to. Uh, let's check this.
yeah i think there is something wrong with my command so maybe i should uh shouldn't really do this for some reason it sometimes gives zero just randomly and i think this problem is actually here but i don't know how to force to display exit code always so i guess we are a bit stuck with with this stuff anyhow uh, what i can do is the following first let's add a clear screen into our test so we can remove uh, this stuff so just say test and and then i will create another thing that will be or actually we will keep it inside test since now since we are generating executable anyway maybe it's a good idea uh, to um, to always run this stuff as well and say echo whoops yeah that sounds good to me so let's try, try to run test great okay now we have a much easier way to retest this stuff which i like and this is not important so off it goes this is zero anyway so we probably can get rid of it um, operating system version uh, this is something we will leave hard-coded for now this is fine i believe that file alignment is also um, required to be that way like we have to have at least 512 bytes uh, we could experiment with this uh, i think if i do uh, this stuff like so it will still um, yeah so see we cannot change this alignment it has to be what it has to be uh, section alignment yeah i think it also has to will follow these boundaries so these two will just uh, leave as is uh, these doesn't really matter um, because we are using uh, uh, reproductive addressing anyway so wherever our executable is loaded well that's where it's loaded and uh, we don't care if you remember or maybe I should uh, show this um, So let's let's just open Visual Studio to illustrate my point. Debug step into. Wow. So Visual Studio is really unhappy about uh, this executable, even though it is uh... mm, wait. Okay, let's recheck. So, I guess it was wrong uh, somehow. Anyhow, uh, so it, it can uh, disassemble the executor, which is what we want. And my point is, if you see this address, it is nowhere near where we wanted it to be because we have this DLL characteristic that says we support dynamic base. And I think if I restart it, it might not even be the same thing. At least it shouldn't be exactly the same thing. So let's check. So this is what it was last time. Uh, actually, it sort of is the same thing, which is kind of interesting. I would expect it to be uh, different every time that we restart but maybe also for uh, development it keeps it the same I'm not sure but anyhow my point was that uh, image base is not where we actually end up so it really doesn't matter what we put in here maybe we can uh, put this comment uh, does not matter as we are using 
dy dynamic base. Okay, let's stop this and continue with our cleanup. Size of image and size of headers is um, interesting. So we probably now can shorten this because we re remember we just removed one of the sections. So we now have um, actually size of headers is uh, should still stay the, this until we figure out if it actually fits into a smaller size now that we cleaned up some of the old stuff. But size of image is something that can be changed, I believe, to be smaller. Uh, we need to close Visual Studio, otherwise it doesn't allow us to do the right thing. Okay. So yeah, as you can see, size of image is can be changed. Uh, or we tightened it up, which is good. Uh, now, size of headers, um, we can check this. So the way to check this is to figure out what is the how many bytes have we occupied at this particular position or more precisely at uh, this position print f uh, percent l u and uh, x e buffer uh, x e buffer occupied let's do that and we have 448 bytes. So technically, we could right now uh, fit into um, in, into a smaller header. So if we really wanted to generate a smaller executable, we could uh, fill this uh, in here. Now. One thing that we could do is leave this as zero and instead do the following. We take, what's the name of this? Optional header and then it was size of headers, right? So optional header size size of headers is a line of xd buffer occupied to uh, optional header file alignment so this would be the probably the most robust thing if it works um, Conversion from, yeah, so the problem here is that our line function actually expects a S32, but we can fix that. Yeah. Let's just say align U64 and it would be like this. Um, in reality, though, those things are words anyway, so it is fine for us to to do it like this. This is okay. Let's check if we are exploding. Mm -hmm. And we are, but we have an assert. So it says that at one oh seven Sir that XZ buffer occupied is less than text section header. Okay.
Aha. So yeah, we ran into a bit of a, a small issue that these things are circularly dependent on each other because to figure out where the sections are going to be located, uh, we need to uh, figure out what is the size of the header and to figure out the size of the header we need to know how many sections there are. So uh, how do we deal with this stuff? Well, we resort to even more patching. The first thing that we do is we remove this stuff. So we say a pointer to our data is uh, zero in both cases. And we remove this calculation and we remove um, this calculation. Yep. Okay. Now we, we can correctly calculate this stuff and we need to uh, say that the buffer occupied is, actually, let's do it like this. Hmm, sorry, add the way around. Or we can even do it in one assignment, although I don't really like one assignment, so let's keep it at two. But now we need to update uh, pointers to raw data. So for now, I will just do it for these two sections, but eventually we can uh, figure out what will be the algorithm for any number of sections. And the way we do this is we say text, uh, text section header uh, pointer to raw data is optional header size of headers. And then for the uh, rdata section header, then we have is optional that will be yeah we will take the previous section which is uh, this stuff and we will add to it the size of that section so text section handler so like this like this and size of raw data. Okay. Section offset and declared identifier. Yeah, we don't need this anymore. Conversion from U64 to D word possible loss of data. Uh, okay, so actually it should be should be other way around. to uh, allow us for less conversions. Okay, let's check it out and see if it still works. Now, it still says assertion failed uh, for this stuff. Uh, why is it so? Well, it actually should be more or equal here. And in reality, we even can remove this assertion because now we are not doing this calculation, right? Because right now we are already providing always enough information or enough size for the header. That means that we don't need this assert. Let's check again. And we still have 42. Okay. Uh, like this, and maybe let's do have um, do this more generically. So we say image section header 
uh, sections is it's gonna be an array and we will put there this text section header and our data section header then we start the our offset so we say this um, 32 section section offset is here and now we can iterate over the array and just do as to i is zero i is less than a static array size of sections sections plus plus i and here's what we do so Uh, we say that sections i pointer to raw data actually it's like this pointer to raw data is a section offset and then we do section offset plus equals to the size of that section so sections i uh, size of raw data okay let's see if that is correct uh, section offset okay Set um, is of type struct use uh, okay section offsets declared identifier and uh, what optional header size of headers that seems fine to me it's just over here ah okay again a very poor here actually it should be like this yeah good let's try it out we still have 42 so now it is relatively easy for us to add a section. We could even uh, do something more fancy, like we could change this into a dynamic array and then we do like push section, which automatically adds it here. But for now, it, it is fine if we have to add them to array here. Good. So what else uh, can be fixed i guess the next thing i want to do so here let's first do this just so it's fine okay um and i would like to change this stuff but this is going to be a bit tricky so as i mentioned before i really don't like how uh, all of this is laid out there is a bunch of weird ping-ponging between addresses and it just does not seem very logical to me so here's the idea that i have we would start with something that we can write without any kind of mm, calculation right so basically uh, we just have knowledge like 
we don't need to measure anything or do calculate any offsets or anything and these are the names so we also need to figure out what would be the data structures that we would need to eventually pass into this function uh, from our code that generates the machine code to have these imports done correctly. So what would the import look like? And right now I will just do it in line and I'll just say struct uh, import uh, like so. I guess, yes, yeah. struct imports, it will be zero for now. And we definitely want a const char star, I guess, library name, and we have function name. Now, library name is common, so there, are, there can be multiple functions within one library. So I guess it will be something like library name and then we would have const char star uh, functions which are which will be an array and later we'll change it into probably a dynamically growing array, but for now let's just keep it simple. Okay, so now we need to have this uh, functions array, so let's do that, const char star functions is, um, let's put 32 function count here, And here we just say exit process. And here we will just put in other stuff. So library name is going to be kernel32 TLL. And then functions is functions and function count is static array size of uh, functions. And now I want to, okay, I forgot the variable name. So uh, kernel 32, and we need to say that we are not using it yet. Let's see if that works. Okay, something did not work out exactly. Ah, yeah. Okay, comma instead of semicolon and the rest is fine. Okay, so I imagine something like this would be kind of okay. And I imagine that also we would have like a list of um, patch location or something like this. So if you think about it, we have this call over here and this call, uh, these four bytes of the call, uh, they are, um, they are the offset from the instruction pointer at this location to the pointer to array uh, to the location of the call address in our executable. So we are pointing from the code segment into data segment uh, where the executable loader will put the location of the import. Uh, if it all sounds uh, a bit confusing, just uh, I can remember we have this uh, diagram um, that basically uh, explains this stuff. So here's call. In our code, it looks slightly different. So instead of absolute address, it will be like relative, uh, rep relative addressing. But the point is exactly the same where we have a call to exit process and then 
uh, somewhere here there will be actually address at this location okay so we'll need that eventually but for now i'm not sure if it is particularly required okay now let's just deal with uh, what we can at the moment and i will add to do saying to do uh or fix me add patch locations okay that's fine we can also think of doing it sort of other way around and this is another change that i might make um, but because it will mess up all kinds of calculations um, it might be slightly difficult but the idea would be to switch these two around and if we are are outputting our data section first then we would know um, how to calculate this offset it will be negative but honestly it doesn't really matter i believe um, so this is kind of something to think about for us to avoid either patching or generating things twice okay although uh, we will still need to generate things twice if this section will need to contain like pointers to this data or something uh, i don't know we'll see we'll see how it goes for now let's just figure out how to do this correctly um, uh, Da -da -da. so at the very start of the section we have 21 uh, 30 which is address table and that points to this stuff which is the function name okay Uh, this is a bit annoying but so like it looks like i will need to patch this in order to do what i want to do uh, because all the offsets will be changed but for now maybe that's okay so we can do the patch here as well i guess so let's let's start changing like this we do s32 star um iat rva is buffer allocate xz buffer s uh, 32 and then we actually patch it over here now this doesn't really do anything hopefully at least it doesn't do anything okay it did do something apparently uh, did I mess it up ah okay yeah so here is where we start to run into the difference between uh, file address and uh, address in memory because this offset here is the one for the file so ideally what i should do is say something like s32 file offset is this and then plus uh, file offset and then i will say plus or 0x file offset plus our data section header and i don't remember what the field is called uh, virtual address yes So remember this relative virtual address so we are you know relative to a virtual address okay 
we are back to 42. That is very good. The next thing that we want to do is uh, also put it into here. And I guess we can do the same trick and the S32 image thunk or star. Actually, this is S64 image thunk is buffer allocate. Um, like in reality, this struct is just a single 64-bit field, so we don't need to allocate a full struct for it, at least. I believe so. Okay. That's good. And now I can do the same thing. So I'm patching this address to here. Let's see if this still works. It does still work, which is good. So we just got rid of two hard-coded addresses. Now, of course, <laughs> this stuff is still very much hard-coded, but we can slowly uh, start to, you know, get rid of this. Okay, how do we do that? We, let's look at what we have here. So the import directory is set to be at 20F8. That is where? That is over here. And the reason it's here is because there was uh, more data sandwiched uh, between that. So now we need to uh, learn how to calculate uh, these offsets, right? Because if you look over here, this says 0x20f8 and we need to know what is our offset from the start of the um, of the buffer. So pointer to raw data is our base. Uh, now if we uh, say, so I will keep this line here, but I will change it later. So I will basically remove it later. But for now, I want to replicate the calculation and patch the location back into uh, that optional header. Because optional header needs to point to here um, but only here we know where here is, so we will need to, to patch this. And the way it would work is we would do something like exe buffer occupied, and this would be S32 offset, or yeah, let's just say this is offset, and if we want to calculate what that would be for stuff, so we just add virtual address. So this just kind of changes uh, address from file offsets into memory offsets. Okay. And I can actually assert here that I calculated correctly that this would be that this offset is a 0x20f8. If this is the case then I did it right and apparently I didn't do it right. So let me recheck, ah okay, it needs to be other way around. This should go first, this could go second. Okay, so now we can calculate this offset uh, correctly, which means that I should be able to get rid of these two lines 
and instead say optional header uh, we probably need some define so let's do define uh, import directory index is one right so I'm just uh, I need to somehow refer to this location in memory and since this is zeros this is first index I should be able to do that so we zero out this virtual address and I will instead try to make it dynamic okay let's try to do that so optional header data directory this virtual address is uh, this stuff missing semicolon and left upper end points to struct use wait no it is here should be arrow good let's try it out okay we still have uh, the right thing and if you notice our directory now is in a different location because now we moved it right after uh, this stuff so we we put it below the the import address table rv or whatever and this just get rid of or removed two magic numbers from our code so this is good progress we cannot yet uh, calculate what is the size of this stuff but we are getting closer let's actually open pepper and look at how our application looks like in it just as a test so you can see we now have less stuff here but it does recognize correctly uh, the address I mean otherwise our executable would not work but also this uh, program is uh, doing it right and the important thing now here the change previously this was at location 20 f8 and now this is at location 2008 so this is good we slightly collapsed uh, this stuff which is always nice and removed calculations okay next thing next thing is a regional uh, first thunk now um, I guess it would be super easy if we just um, put this uh, thunk right after the import descriptor and I guess now that I'm doing this now this starts to make a bit more sense how this is done but not that much either so I'm still not exactly super happy with how this is done but it, it's getting closer to what I would expect to happen okay before we go any further let's recheck that everything works uh, it doesn't because pepper is open but that's okay okay that's that's good and we have this to do here so let's just uh, try to take care of it and I think this is can indeed be zero so this is this original hint but we don't really need uh, like we will just use function name for uh, lookup 
ordinal hint. Okay. At least I believe that's what it is. Yeah. So this is not required. Not required. Uh, value not required. Okay. One less uh, magic number. We are getting somewhere. Okay, next thing. So the first thunk is something that we can now um, fix. So since we are outputting these guys here, I guess what I want to do is to define something like file offset to REA and what we pass into here is the section. So let's say section header and we pass in the, well, I guess we can probably do it even like this. So let's just extract this stuff. We obviously need to have a bit more slashes at the end. You can never go wrong with slashes in the macro. Okay, 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 okay. We need to say that this is section header and this is section header. And now we can do file of set to REA and we pass our section header. Okay. That builds. Does it blend though? It does blend. So we can continue. Okay. And the reason I did that is because we also need to have uh, this uh, stuff here. So this is import address table virtual address. And I guess this is the wrong name for it because this is um, exit process RVA. This would be the better name for for this. Um, and even more so, it is exit process. I forgot how is this called? Descriptor. Um, we can look it up later. What what is the right data structure for this? But for now, let's just say descriptor. Is this in this? Is this named here somehow? Import structures. No, it just says hint name. It's not very. Uh, very nice, but I guess it's fine. And name, RVA. I'm okay with, with this stuff. So exit process name RVA. That's good. Now I can say that um, uh, do, 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 do. So S32 star, or actually not star, just S32. IAT REA is a file offset to REA, REA of 
our data section header. Okay, it is not used, it will be used in just a second. So the first thunk is what should be in that address. Let's check if I correctly understand this. Okay, and it also should go into the so the same way as we patch import directory index virtual address, we need to patch uh, the virtual address in uh, in the top header. So we're here. Now this is kind of interesting. So the size of this is uh, the size of this is. 10, which means it is 16 bytes, which means that these things, yeah, these things are definitely need to be actually 64 bytes in size. So I should be, I'm actually doing it wrong right now. Let's fix that first. Like this thing actually should be like this and like this. So now the size will be correct. See if that's fine. Okay, let's check everything. Like it's always doesn't hurt to check in these kind of things because it's very easy to get to a point where debugging will take forever to figure out what offsets you screwed up along the way. Um, but the point is that we we need to add another index and we say. Uh, IA, IAT directory index and this one is zero, one, two, so this is uh, eight, nine, twelve, so I guess it is third, twelve, right? So there are twelve here, it means that this is index twelve. I hope I can count. Well, we'll see in a moment if I can. So we replace this with zero. And then here we do the same thing as we do here. And we say IAT RV. Let's do test. Cool. So turns out I can count. That that's always nice to know. And now this is the uh, stuff. So start IAT, maybe let's do it this way. And then we say, and IAT. Later we can figure out like extract it into functions and do all of this kind of stuff. But for now, actually it's uh, easier to deal with if it's all in one file with just some, um, some comments specifying what is going on. Maybe I don't even need start and I will just do IAT and then I will do uh, import directory. Okay, so this is this stuff and now we should be able to patch the other part of this uh, directory. So actually I should be able to do this and say uh, virtual address is IT, ITRE and the, the size is something else. Uh, size would be exe buffer occupied minus this. Okay, we don't need to know what is the name of this struct. Uh, so maybe maybe it is easier to do it uh, like this. Yeah, let's just do it like this, it's fine. It's not that much shorter anyway, but I will not need to look up the the name of the struct for this.
missing yeah this is just wrong and here we have the same situation that everything inside of here is s32 good let's see if it is actually good it is still actually good we still have our nice 42 so we can continue and this also means that here i can do this i can say that's actually a zero okay let's recheck still works great so see slowly but surely we are getting rid of our fix means there is still plenty to do but it's it's okay cool mm. now we need to do something about uh, this original first thunk well if we want to keep everything as it is right now then i guess we could do it this way um, let me think about this for a second so the less patching i'm doing the generally the more happy i am and this name it is at uh, this location so maybe if i would just take uh, this stuff and i would do something like this so i would say s32 library or kernel 32 name file offset is zero and then it will be occupied actually we can do it directly we can just say it here uh, this goes away this is not actually required we can put this back yeah that looks good to me and then here we do uh, <laughs> kernel 32 name rva is file offset to rva and section header so something like this and now we can put it over here well let's see what this does oh, it's a bit tricky so i'm not sure i actually didn't mess it up somewhere along the way i didn't which is always nice to see. Now, to show you what that actually did, let me open it here. Interesting, so somehow it's missing IAT now. Oh, maybe I did mess up something. Oh, I probably messed up some of the sizes now, but shouldn't really matter i mean it still works so i don't want to complain and as you can see now what changed is uh, this is uh, let me zoom this stuff so first we output this iit stuff here we can do something like strings or library names So we have one real one and then one zero one and then we put this uh, kernel 32 
and then we have where did this space come from i wonder um so i'm not exactly sure where this comes from it might be alignment problem so does this actually align on four bytes yeah it looks like this is actually an alignment problem so this function is not great but for now it's fine um, it doesn't really hurt us then we have four bytes here for which are these original first tongue and this is the next thing that we want to fix okay how do we fix that well uh, this original first tongue is uh, this stuff and we basically just move it to the top as well ah, but there is this image thunk and image thunk is what exactly Okay, so this is okay. So this is at offset twenty one twenty, and this is at offset twenty one thirty. And we are writing out there the offset of this. So this is kind of a double indirection stuff okay well as far as this one goes we can totally just uh, remove this and say that so this can be uh, zero and then we say that image thunk s32 image thunk rva is uh, file offset to rva okay and yeah actually we can even move this up because as long as this happens after we allocate it will be the right the right thing so we can remove uh, this stuff now and we should not have 120 anywhere in our code so let's recheck here we still have stuff so we still have size um, we'll figure out how to calculate that in a moment but we definitely don't have 2120 anywhere hard coded so if this works then it's good progress okay it does still work that's good now we just need to get rid of uh, this stuff and ideally i would also like to get rid of the uh, patch as well that's just nicer but for now we can remove this so we can remove this stuff so we just will put it right after uh, where it was before so right after this image tank which how it, again how it was because we just moved the image tank but we are now moving the rest of it and i guess we do the same stuff so we say import name rva is this stuff yeah this is fine we don't need these two lines i mean i can even do it this way probably so like so not exactly sure but seems fine 
Okay, so that didn't exactly work like how I expected. Let me recheck. So how it was before. So let me do void of import name re. So this works. Now, what does it do? It says that, so it goes to a particular file offset and then it Yeah, so this should be exactly the same. I wonder why that doesn't work. Let me retry. So this should be this. And then image tank is exactly the same thing, right? Yeah, it is. So, it should be like this. Okay, something is really not uh, right with this. So, what is that? Let's recheck stuff. Here we don't do anything except for this size, but I don't believe that the size changed. Although maybe that is the issue. Um, we have this image tank RE, and instead of being at this file set, we just want to move it slightly up but that for some reason causes an issue. It might be that I'm messing up something which I'm not seeing, but it also might be that there needs to be some kind of alignment that I'm missing. I'm not exactly certain. Oh, I think I know what the problem is. Here, since this is says uh, first thunk, then probably it needs to have uh, an empty one. So let's do buffer append s64. And zero. Okay. Let's see if that helps. And it does. Okay, so that was a good thing that I thought about this. Because debugging this is always a really, really horrible nightmare. Okay. Well, I think this is a nice place to take a pause. Uh, we did the full cleanup of the of the way imports are encoded. Now there are no hard-coded addresses, which means next time we can hopefully start utilizing a structure similar to this and actually add more imports to our executable and which will eventually lead to us uh, using this stuff. Or maybe next time we will try to calculate these offsets. Maybe that would be a good place. But anyhow, we now have nice executable. We are slowly but surely getting rid of um, previous history of it being hard-coded, and this is really, really nice. With that, I thank you very much for watching, stick around till now, and see you next time.